So today we're starting section 2.7. We will be finishing this on Monday. Our objectives today, we want to be able to verify inverse functions. We want to be able to actually find the inverse of a function. And we're going to look at something called the horizontal line test to tell if things are functions. Okay, we'll start also with the graphing of one-to-one -one functions, but we'll finish that up on Monday and look at this last objective, um, comparing graphs on the same axes and doing some limiting of domains. Okay. So for the first part here, I'm going to pause the video. I just want you guys to complete the two t-charts. Okay. So the first function is x cubed plus 1. Go ahead and put those values in there. And for our second function, use this t-chart. Okay, just take a minute, and then when you have your T-charts done, check with the people at your table. All right, so for function f, we're taking some x value, cubing it, and adding 1. If we cube 0 and add 1, we get 1. All right, cube 1, and then add 1. All right, what are the rest of my numbers here? 0, 9. Okay. Agree, disagree. We good? Okay. For the purple one here, g of x, we are taking the cube root of x minus 1. So we plug a, uh, plug a 1 in. 1 minus 1 is 0. Cube rooting is 0. Plug a 2 in. 2 minus 1 is 1. Cube rooting is 1. Put a 0 in. Minus 1 is negative 1. What do we get if we cube root negative 1? What's the cube root of negative 1? Negative 1, yeah. Put a 9 in. 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 cube rooted is 2. And negative 7 minus 1 would give us negative 8. Cube rooting that gives us negative 2. All right. Take a minute and plot your points. Try to do them in two different colors or maybe make one dotted and one solid, that type of thing. Go ahead and check your first one. It should look like that. All right. Get the second one finished. All right. Checking your two graphs. Do your graphs look like mine? Okay. What do you notice about them? Are they similar? Yes. One has more of a vertical twist, the green one. One has more of a horizontal twist. Is there a point or a, a line that we could fold our paper on and have these two match up? Like a parabola, we say, is symmetric to the y-axis, right? We could fold it along the y-axis and the two sides would match. What line would make these two match? A diagonal line right through the origin, slope of 1. Okay, that line is called y equals x. All right, if we fold it along y equals x, those two pictures would look the same. All right, so inverse functions are reflections of each other over the line y equals x. I want you to take a minute and look at the two t-charts that we made. Do you notice anything about the t-charts? Everybody's too busy writing. Let's just take one point to compare. If I take this point here, what's our coordinates? 9, 2. Yes? And it reflects over that y equals x line up to this point. 
which is 2, 9. So what's happened? Your flip, right? Your X and Ys are flipping places. So look at your T charts. Did we do that? Here we have 0, 1. Over here we have 1, 0, right? They just flipped. So if we have this last point here of 328, what would be my point over on the purple one? 28, 3. And does it work? If we put 28 into that function, subtract 1, we get 27. Cube root it, we get 3. Okay? So inverse functions, your x and y's are just going to change places. So if I had given you the green graph and said, now you graph the inverse one, all you'd have to do is pick the key points that I graphed, right? And then just switch their coordinates. Okay? So for inverse functions, what happens is that the domain of the first one is the same as the range of the second one. All right? The x's in the first one become the y's in the inverse. And the y's in the first one, the range, become the x's, the domain of the second one. All right, so the steps for finding an inverse. And you have to find it, be able to find it algebraically. All right, so if I give you an equation, I want you to algebraically be able to convert it into its inverse. The first is that you're going to change f of x and think of it as a y. All right, we know those are interchangeable. The only reason they're writing f of x is to indicate that it is starting out as a function. Okay, the original equation is a function. It would pass that vertical line test. Okay, so if you see it written with an f of x, just remember that's y. Okay, then we're going to switch our x and y's around. Okay, so where you see a y, you're going to write an x. Where you see an x, you're going to write a y. And then we have to solve for that new y. OK, so let's try those steps here. We rewrote it. We changed f of x into just a y. Now I'm going to switch them. So my y becomes an x, and my x becomes a y. Now how would I solve that for y? What steps do I need to do? Add the 7 over. Okay. And then divide out the 5. OK. Do you know what that would look like if we graphed it? How many think they know? Nobody? What if I rewrote it like this? So x plus 7 was being divided by 5. That means the x is getting divided by 5, so we have 1 fifth of our x. The 7 is being divided by 5, so we have 7 fifths. What is this? What? Slope intercept form? Right? y equals mx plus b. So its shape would just be a line? Okay. Would that pass a vertical line test? Sure. So it is a function. That means the original equation was a function, and my new inverse is also a function. Both pass a vertical line test. If the inverse is a function, we can rewrite it with function notation. This isn't showing up real clearly here. It should be f with a little negative 1, almost as if it were an exponent. It's not an exponent, but it is a superscript. Okay. So since this last one here is a function, I'm going to change the y back into function notation. But I'm going to say it's not the same as my original f of x. It is the inverse of function f. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I want you guys to try number two. Check with your partners at your table if you're stuck. All right, so the first thing we think of f of x as being y, we switch our x and y's around, and then we have to solve for y. So my first step looks like you guys subtracted 2. 
and then you divide it out in eight. Now, how do you undo a cube? You cube root both sides. Okay. With odd roots, you don't need the plus and minus on there. We can simplify this a little bit. We know the cube root of 8, right? Cube root of 8 is 2. So let's go ahead and clean the denominator up. We'll still have a cube root of x minus 2 on top, but we can make that denominator just a plain 2. Okay? On the right-hand side here, I would just have a y. But now we need to think about, is this a function? Do you remember the shape of a cube root graph? Sideways twist kind of a thing, right? So would that pass a vertical line test? Yes. So it is a function. We can rewrite y now as the inverse of f. Okay. All right, our third example is a little different. We're going to change the y into an x. We're going to change our x's into y's. Okay? But I'm trying to solve for y, and there's a y in two different spots. Okay? If you run into that situation, you have to somehow get those y's to be 1. All right, you got to condense it down. So my first step here is I'm going to multiply this quantity y minus 1 over to the other side. Okay. And then I'm going to distribute. So I end up with xy minus x equals 2y plus 3. And now the trick is get anything that has a y on it on one side. Get anything that doesn't have a y on the opposite side. All right, so I'm going to bring this x over to the right-hand side, and I'm going to bring the 2y over to the left side. I have to subtract the 2y to move it. I have to add the x to move it. Okay? Now, all the pieces that have y's in them are on one side. How could we condense that so there's just a single y? What did you say? Um, well, if I divide by x, I'm going to end up having to divide the 2y by x. And then I get a whole bunch of fractions again. What? We can take out a y, right? There's a y common to both. We can factor it out. So if I factor it out, what's left? X minus 2. All right, have I now gotten it down to where there's just a single y? And now I can solve for it. All right, instead of multiplying this x minus 2 over, I'm going to divide it to the other side. Okay. All right, now. This was not written in function notation originally, right? It was not f of x, it was just a y. Let's check to see if this is actually going to be a function. So grab your graphing calculators. You're going to type this in. Make sure you put parentheses so that you have the whole top being divided by the whole bottom. All right? So what does your graph look like? Has two branches? Yes? Okay. We're going to learn about those graphs. You've got a branch here, right? And a branch here, roughly. So is it going to pass a vertical line test? Yes. So it is a function, which means we could change this y into f inverse of x. Okay. Questions on algebraically finding the inverse of something? All right. Does every function have an inverse that is also a function? The three examples we just did all had functions, right? They all worked out nice. But that's not always the case. 
All right? I can give you something that starts out being a function, but its inverse is not. So my answer here is no, only one-to-one -one functions have inverses that are functions. Have you heard that term before, one-to-one -one function? What it means is that for every x, there's a single y, and for every y, there's a single x. In other words, it works both ways. All right, would that be a function if I gave you that t-chart? If you plotted those points, would it be a function? You have the point 2, 5, right? You've got the point negative 2, 4. You've got the point 1, 4. Would it pass a vertical line test? Yes. But if I switch them, right, when we take the inverse, we switch our x and y's, would it pass a vertical line test? No, because now we have the 4, right, going back to two different values. So that's what we mean by 1 to 1. Every x would have to have a single y. So this point would not work in there. Does that make sense? All right. So talk at your tables. Will the function y equals x squared have an inverse that's a function? All right. What did you come up with at your tables? Will the inverse be a function? No. no. We can still find the inverse. We can come up with an equation for it. We just wouldn't write it with that f with a little negative 1, that inverse notation. So what would the inverse function look like? OK, x equals y squared is my first step. How do I get rid of a square? Square root. And when we square root, what do we have to put in front? The plus minus. That's your clue, right? You're going to put some x in, and you're going to get a positive and a negative answer out. Okay? So it's not one-to-one. -one. So its inverse would not be a function. We can test it graphically using something called a horizontal line test. How many remember hearing about that last year? All right, so we're going to look at our original function here. y equals x squared has coordinates, my board's off here, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 4, pretend they're in the right spot. Yes? To redo my board. Okay, so what would happen if we took the inverse of that? We start out with a basic parabola, right? But when we do its inverse, what happens? Picture reflecting it over y equals x. All of your coordinates flip-flop, right? So this point over here that's 3, 9 becomes 9, 3. Okay, the point over on the left, negative 3, 9, becomes 9, negative 3. Do you remember your square root graph picture? I'm giving up since my board's messed up. So the inverse of a vertical parabola is a horizontal parabola. Would this pass a vertical line test, the green one? No. So... The idea here is before we even worry about what this inverse is going to look like, we knew what the original function looked like, right? We knew it was a parabola. Does a parabola pass a horizontal line test? No. So then I already know that my inverse won't pass a vertical test when I flip it. Okay? So the one thing to keep in mind is when you do the vertical and horizontal tests, you perform them on the original function. The vertical test tells me the original function is a function, the original one. 
the horizontal test tells me something about its inverse. Okay. All right. The last thing we're going to look at. If I give you two functions and I say prove to me that these are inverses, I'm basically telling you it should work, right? If I just say prove it, then they should work. You are going to have to do two compositions. You're going to have to do f of g, and you're going to have to do g of f. In both cases, the composition has to simplify down to be a single x. Now, this is a place where students often miss easy points on their test because you don't use the correct notation. All right? So, first thing I would be looking for if this were a test question. Are you stating which composition you're doing? Because you have to do both, but you have to tell me which one's which. Okay? So the first thing I would look for is that you've said, I'm going to do f of g. All right? What would that look like? Well, I would start with function f, which is 4 times something minus 7, right? And then I'm going to dump in function g. which is x plus 7 divided by 4. Okay? Then I'm going to show very carefully the order that things cancel out. All right? So everything I'm canceling is going to be a new step. What would drop out first? The 4s, right? We're taking x plus 7, we're dividing by 4, and then we're timesing by 4. Those are going to drop out, cancel each other out. They're inverse operations, right? Times being dividing. So I have left x plus 7 and then minus the 7. Okay? So I've canceled the 4s first. Now what cancels out? The 7s. I'm adding 7, I'm subtracting 7. Those add up to 0. So all I have left is my x, right? Which is what was supposed to happen. So you show me all that work, all that detail, you'll get full points for that part of it. The next part says do the other composition, g of f. So now we have to start with our g function, which was something plus 7 divided by 4. And we're going to dump f into that. So if we put function f, 4x, minus 7 in there, okay? Now, what's going to drop out first? This time the 7s drop out first. What I have left is a 4x divided by 4, okay? So I've canceled my 7s. I'm simplifying everything on top before I try to divide by the 4. Now my 4s would drop out. Okay. But look at the order. In the first one, it was the 4s that dropped out and then the 7s. In this one, it was the 7s that dropped out and then the 4s. Right? You have to show me which order. You have to show me which, fun which composition you're doing, and you have to give me every step of the way. How did you get down to the x? Okay? What I don't want to see... We've set up the same one. I'm just copying that one down. I don't want to see this. Slash, 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 slash. All that's left is an X. You will not get points for that. Okay? Because you aren't indicating that you know how things are undoing each other. Inverse functions should undo each other. Yes? Okay. So make sure you write all steps. So homework tonight, you are starting on page 309. You're going to do 1 to 37 odds. 
Again, the work must be on there, not just answers from the back.